Hello, my friends. Today, I just have a quick question. If you are like myself, and you have a worldview and opinions that are considered evil, reprehensible, uh, portrayed as either some kind of deep-seated evil or mental illness by the mainstream establishment, by the academics, by the government, by the news media, by just about every other mainstream establishment authority figure. Um, why would you send your child to a program like public school? Or any other school, for that matter. Especially public school. When you know that public schools are run by the very same authorities, the academics, the government, that demonize you, that portray you as society's worst ill today. When you know, I mean, you know that that program is run by them and it is meant explicitly to mold their minds. I mean, when you look, I mean, look at some of the work that I mentioned in my last video. Uh, Charlotte Iserby, for example, talks about how when she was being, when she was involved in the Department of Education and, and on her school board and in other sorts of educational programs, uh, she was sent to a workshop that trained teachers and social workers and other uh, people who were involved in the school system to be, quote, change agents. And she learned that the new agenda of the public schools was not to really educate children. That's kind of a secondary agenda. The primary agenda was challenging traditional values and instilling in them these new values, these new Marxist, multicultural, anti-traditional, often degenerate values, quote unquote, values. So if you know that the school system is meant to mold the child's mind, and the people in charge of that are explicitly against you, explicitly portray you as a horrible person. Why would you send them to that system? And if you do send them to the system, what, what do you expect will happen? So the thing about children is they crave social acceptance, especially around the teenage years. I know this from personal experience. I know this from knowing my, my, my own siblings, from knowing my friends, from knowing myself at that age. Teenagers especially crave social acceptance. And if you dump them into a social setting like public school where they have authority figures like these trained Marxist teachers and they have friends surrounding them who don't have parents as based as yourself and they they're just immersed in this kind of social setting it really doesn't matter how good of a parent you are. It, it doesn't matter how much love you give them. It doesn't matter how kind or how sweet or how uh, unified you, t you were as parents or how rational your explanations were to them. That child craves 
social acceptance and they will start to realize that you, parent, are not socially acceptable in the setting that you yourself dumped them in. Oh, you know, I just wanted to add, it's not just that they're getting exposed to the social pressures and the psychological conditioning uh, that is given to them in the school system. It's that your own social pressure, so to speak, your own moral influence uh, and the values that you're trying to communicate to them are being fundamentally undercut by the fact that you are sending them to this institution. It's confusing. It's a performative contradiction for you to say, okay, I have, these are our values as a family. This is what's right. This is what's good in the world. These are the traditional sort of uh, values and the traditional worldview that is good and right to have. But I'm going to send you to an institution that teaches you the opposite. It undercuts your values and it fundamentally challenges the seriousness with which you hold those values. And uh, children, I think, are very perceptive of hypocrisy and of contradictions. Uh, at least I know I was and a lot of the teenagers that I've known growing up and in my family, for example, uh, they're very perceptive and can sniff like a shark can sniff blood in the water. They can sniff out contradictions. Um, and that is a glaring contradiction. And it challenges, like I said, it challenges the seriousness of your worldview. So don't undercut yourself that way. And for most, not all, some children are, you know, they're independent thinkers their whole lives. That's, that's uh, a rare variety, but some people are just like that. And, you know, good on them. They'll probably stick by you. But a lot of people have this uh, overriding mechanism in their brains where they are, and especially, I hate to say it, but especially young women, have this overriding mechanism in their brain that sort of uh, overwhelms any kind of rational faculty in favor of being accepted socially. And teenagers, like I've said, uh, have a particularly sensitive finger to the wind of social acceptability. And um, you are basically putting yourself and putting your child into a situation that is going to divide your family, uh, that is going to cause conflict, that is going to make things very difficult for yourself, and will likely tear you apart. I mean, the, the whole Hollywood meme of the rebellious teenage child has a lot of truth to it. And if you yourself promote that by handing them over to your own enemies, thinking, I'll be able to uh, overcome that influence. I'm their parent. Of course I can overcome that influence. You can't in a lot of cases. And in the cases where the child doesn't completely rebel against you, uh, it's just because of their own innate independence, which is, like I said, a rare sort of a variety of person that uh, can't be predicted and you can't count on that. But what you can count on is that most people during that time of their life crave social acceptance. 
and uh, it'll end up tearing you apart if you put them into that setting. So keep your kids out of the public schools, homeschool. It's of the utmost importance. It's something that I, I could never personally compromise on. And I hope that you don't compromise on it. I mean, it's one of the best things you can do for them. So, thank you for watching.